Hello, everybody. Andrew Blake from the digitalaudiomanual.com with another episode of Cubase Tips for the week of November 14th, 2025. Let's start off today talking about note expression. Note expression allows you to get right into a MIDI note, change some of its performance attributes. If I take this string part, let's say I go to this note and I right click on it. If I come down the menu, I have an option that says open the note expression editor. And then I get this little picture. This little picture allows me to actually draw in some kind of change on this note. And it only affects this particular note. We go over in the inspector, look at the various tabs. We have one up here that says note expression. If I open that up, it shows all the various things that can be affected with this little window. Right now, pan is highlighted. If I go over to this window and I look in the bottom left, it says pan. If I go back over in the inspector and I choose volume, then I come back to this editor, look in the lower left, it says volume. Right click and change over to my line tool, for example, and then draw a straight line from the bottom to the top. When I play that note now, the volume goes from low to high. Switch back to my line tool, do the same thing, but in the opposite direction, draw the note from high to low. Then if I play the whole part, I get this. So it gives you a very exact way to affect the performance of single MIDI notes. If I exit out of this little dialog by clicking somewhere, a very tiny little icon has now appeared on the MIDI event, showing that there's some kind of note expression here. Then ultimately, if I want to get rid of this, I can go back up to the MIDI menu, come down to the option for note expression, and I can say remove the note expression. All right, let's talk about chord functions. Pretty much any time you're going to use chords in Cubase, you're going to want to make use of a chord track. To create a chord track, we go to the inspector, tell it to add a track, and then just choose the option that says chord. Switching over to my pencil tool, I can now draw what's known as chord events. They initially show up as these little marks with an X on it. Then if I double click on any one of these chord events, I get this pop-up that shows the chord editor and the chord assistant. Initially, when I click on these different chords, I don't hear anything, but if I open up a VST instrument, this piano, for example, turn its monitor button on. Now, when I click on my chord events, I can actually hear them. And when I'm in the editor, if I go through these different chord choices, I can hear the changes as well. Clicking through different root notes or different chord types or the various tensions and even the bass notes. Once I come up with a chord that I like, I can come up and hit this arrow in the upper right. And now I move on to the next chord event. And then I can create a chord on this. And using these steps, I can quickly populate my chord track and then be ready to create my song or do any number of different kinds of creative changes as I move along. Next, let's talk about the project logical editor. In any project, go up to the project menu, come down to an option that says project logical editor. You have two choices between setup or apply the preset. Let's choose setup. It opens up a dialog window, and this is the project logical editor. What is the project logical editor? It allows you to carry out some pretty sophisticated operations, things that may take many steps, brings them all together, and allows you to hit one button and apply that operation across your project. One of the best ways to begin learning about this is to analyze the existing presets. Let's do a simple example to see how this works. I have some drum tracks down here, all made with MIDI. I'm going to take my scissors tool. I'm going to make a few cuts so that I have some small MIDI parts on each of these individual tracks. And these small MIDI parts, if I highlight them for a second, are all less than one bar in length. The other MIDI parts are greater than a bar. Using something like the Project Logical Editor, we can open up the list of presets. We can hit these plus and minus buttons to open or close all of the different presets. As I scroll down the list, the section that says parts and events, there's one in here called colorize the small MIDI parts. If I choose that option, then all the steps necessary are now put into the project logical editor. This is how you can begin analyzing these various steps to see how these tasks are accomplished so you could build some of these of your own. In this particular example, it begins by telling you the container type is equal to a part. The next line tells you that that part is MIDI. And then the third line tells you that the length of that MIDI part has to be less than one bar, which clearly defines exactly what we're looking for down here. 
In this next area, it tells you the transform action, meaning it's going to tell you what it's actually going to do to these small MIDI parts. It tells you that the set color is going to be a fixed value. And in this example, it says color eight. You can click on any of these fields and customize them to what we want. I'm going to choose this kind of color blue, which this now says is blue four. And then at the very bottom of the editor, there's a drop down. It tells you you can delete these items, transform them, which is what we're going to do. Or you can just select or deselect them. Leaving this just like it is, if I hit the apply button, all those tiny little MIDI parts have now been colored blue with a simple click of a button. And there are so many pre-existing operations already set up in here for you. If you just take a few minutes to scan through the various titles and different categories. And beyond that, once you've actually created some of these or just become familiar with them, you don't even need to open the editor up. You can simply go up to project, back down to the project logical editor. Instead of going to setup, hit apply the preset, choose your preset, and then immediately carry out these various operations. Knowing how to use functions like this not only will increase what you can do in Cubase, but in many ways, it just simply adds to the fun factor, doing things that otherwise could take a lot of intense editing time and other refinements just to pull them off. And if you're ready to increase your skill set on all these various topics, like note expression and chord functions and the Project Logical Editor, be sure to click the link in the description below so you can get your free preview copy of the Digital Audio Manual or stop by the digitalaudiomanual.com to get more information. So take all these tips, go have some fun with them, and then I'll see you next time.